indie pro wrestler by the name of Dante Draconis. He is with me right now. What's going on, man? Um, nothing much. Just interested in being... Hey, thanks for having me on. That's awesome, man. I want to thank you so much for being on the show uh, this afternoon. Truly appreciate it. No problem. So, so let's go ahead and get started. Exactly what, how did you got started in wrestling? Um, to be honest with you, wrestling has been always in my blood. Like, I've always wanted to do it. Um, the career changes here and there. But um, about four years ago, I decided to pursue it heavily. Um, I met Amazing Red and Brian XL of House of Glory Wrestling School in New York. And um, after a brief conversation with them, I started training. And about three and a half years later, I'm still doing it and loving every minute of it. So your mission, Amazing Red very well-known wrestler from his days with TNA, very talented wrestler, one of the true pioneers of the X Division. Um, what was it like getting a chance to work with him and training with him, etc.? I mean, he's uh, one of those trainers that gets in the ring with you, and it's something that a lot of people don't get in other places, not to say, but it's it's a different, like, his his breed of t training is just, it's so vigorous and so, um, it's so motivating, like, it, it pushes you to your limits and makes you want more, if you know what I mean. That's awesome. So, That's absolutely awesome. So, you got this nickname, The Juggernaut, um, and what I want to know, this is what's very interesting. I always want to know the story behind these characters that comes into life. So how did your character um, came to life? Was it through a uh, promoter's idea? Was it your idea? Was it a collective both? Uh, it, it was mainly my idea. I worked to figure out what. I wanted to do, I was on the side at times, like I had a gimmick, just not a name, and um, at first um, I managed a wrestler and I had no face, and I had to pretty much end my gimmick, and slowly the transgression and the, the transformation started happening, and I got gear, a mask, and, you know, became more of an element of horror and disgust and wanted to inflict fear into people's hearts. And then the raw emotions came out there in the promos and the screaming, and it's, it takes over you, I can say. That's very cool, man, and... Uh, I did check out some of the photos and some of your wrestling videos and everything. And I must say, man, you definitely are very talented and your character is very cool, very appealing, you know. Um, and you definitely have separate yourself from, from a lot of people out there in your, in your area. And you're definitely on the bigger things. I truly believe that. You definitely are one of those guys that, you know, a lot of potential and, you know, sky's the limit type of feel, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I, to be honest with you, like the one thing that I am very interested in, like, is in the, like, the horror genre. And, like, I listen to, I grew up listening to, like, heavy metal music and I played in bands and stuff like that and just wanted to be able to inflict and to showcase that kind of character that I believe hasn't been on TV at like 
probably in a long time, um, to be honest with you, the fear of a character. Most people don't fear, you know, villains anymore. You know, my character is who is an extension of who I am, and I want to be able to show you from when I come out that curtain that you're going to see something that you never that you've never seen before and this is gonna be something that you probably gonna check underneath your bed after you get home just in case to see if I'm there. Well said man, definitely well said. Um now who do you consider like influences in your career? Those that you looked up to or those that may have inspired you to get into wrestling? Well, to be honest with you, as watching wrestling growing up, I was a very, you know, you know, big Bret Hart fan. Um, he was he was the consummate face, you could say, a good guy. But when I started, like, really getting into it and watching The Undertaker, and then listening, like listening to a Cactus Jack McFoley promo changed my life. Listening to Raven talk changed my life. Like it was like it was listening to promos like Jake the Snake, and hearing these people not just talk about something that I could relate to, but talk in a way that can transcend the camera and pull you in. And once you're in, you're in. And like. Those people help mold, you know, the character to what he is and creates the demon into what it is. And like I said, that once the mask is on, the transformation is complete. And it's it's like wearing war paint to going to war. So, you're Undertaker, and he's got a match coming up this Sunday at WrestleMania against Shane McMahon for the power and all that good stuff. And there's a lot of speculation with the quote-unquote stipulation that this could very well be Undertaker's not last WrestleMania match, but last match, period. Do you think that we may be seeing, and I want to ask your honest opinion on this, do you think that we may be seeing Undertaker um, for the last time in the wing this coming Sunday? You think this is it? Um, to be honest with you, no one can ever really say when it's your last match. Only you can say it, or unless your doctor says it. But as a wrestler, you always have the itch. Even when you retire, you still have the itch. But he has given us 25 plus years of so some of the greatest promos and fights and matches of all time. And the best part about it is if you want to relive it, you can on the network. But, you know, if this is his last match, then I guess what better way to end your career in the hell in the cell with something that he ended a lot of careers in. I definitely can see that for sure, you know. I mean, why not? If this is if this is legitimately the end of Mark Calloway, aka The Undertaker, then what more better way to end it in your home state of Texas, in a pay per view that you helped elevate it, you made more appearances than anyone, you've won more matches than anyone, you've won championships, you've had classic matches there, so and you helped elevate it, Hell in a Cell match into what it is today. So, I mean, I guess with Undertaker at this point, Father Time has pretty much uh, ca caught up to him and catches up to us all. And I, I, with, with, with Undertaker, I guess, and you bring up having the itch, you know, it, it can never, it can never go away. Um, I just hope that if he does go out, he goes out on his own terms instead of what happened with Daniel Bryan, what happened with Sting um, being pretty much forced to end because of injuries and such. Now, Undertaker has had his his share of injuries in his career, um, 
I guess fortunately for him, he's only around a few times a year, so he's not on the road putting his body on the line every single week or whatever. Uh, if this is it, it's been a hell of a good career as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, you look at it this way, what better, what better person to wrestle in the hell in the cell than somebody as crazy as him and like Shane McMahon? I mean, it's going to be, it's probably going to be this, the match of the night, but I still say um, I'm looking forward to seeing what Ambrose does with Lesnar, but that's just me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, why don't you go ahead, promote your upcoming shows, events, appearances that people should check out? Well, first off, if you have a computer, if you, if you should always go to houseofgloryonline.com because, you know, it's not just a school. It's one of the highest promotions in the Northeast region. Um, we have a show coming on April 9th at the Elks Lodge in Queens. In Queens. Um, if you want to train with us, and train with, and see me personally, uh, we uh, have a school at 564 Woodward Avenue, Queens, New York. All the information is at um, House Glory Online. Um, we all, like, like I said, we have a show April 9th. Um, I'm also going to be in uh, PPW in um, Pennsylvania and, um, on the 16th. And you, like I said, you never know when, where I'm going to be, where, when I'm going to strike. But when I do, it's going to be hell to pay. Everyone, please check this man out. Dante Draconis. Support your local indie wrestling companies near you. Check out some amazing talent and you know show you support they put their bodies and their lives literally on the line just so they can entertain us fans um and i get it people be so caught up on what's going on on the pros but we're out the indies there is no pros all the wrestlers you see on television they didn't get started in the pros they got started in the indies they and he says, where is that? Who knows? You may see the next big star for all I know. But aside from that, just go out there, check the out, check out these talents at Indie Talent, and uh, like Dante and company, and uh, show you support. Um, and for people that wants to get in touch with you, book you for shows, or just interact with you social media wise, why don't you go ahead promote your social media links? Uh, if you have Twitter or Instagram, it's uh, follow Draconis. Um, if you want to, any bookings or anything, you just go to draconisbookings at gmail.com. If you need to get any information, just go to the Twitter at follow Draconis. It's all there. Well, Don Teddy, it was great chatting with you. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, continued success goes out to you. And um, have a great weekend, man. Enjoy yourself, man. Thanks, Laura. Uh, you, have a good, you have a great weekend, man.